Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. I hope everyone is having a happy crochet or knitting day. Well this video is a crochet tutorial and I decided to make a matching kitchen set for a beautiful holiday dishcloth and matching hanging kitchen towel. So we all need to freshen up our kitchens from time to time and with the 4th of July right around the corner I thought this would be the perfect set. Now I'm calling this the holiday kitchen set because I used the 4th of July multi-colors of red, white, and blue. But this would be gorgeous if you're thinking ahead and you need to make a lot of gifts for friends and co-workers and family you could make this in any color combination you can use beautiful multis that match your friend's kitchen or family's kitchen you can do this in a beautiful multi Christmas colors and make these up for the Christmas holiday season now I separated the two projects into two separate videos. So this video is part one where I'm going to show you how to make this really quick and easy dishcloth. And then I'll come out with part two where I'll show you how to make the coordinating hanging kitchen towel. Just so it's easier you can go directly to the project you want and the video doesn't seem quite as long. Now the dishcloth measures eight and a half inches across by eight and a half inches tall. It's a square dishcloth. And the kitchen towel at the widest point, now this is folded, is 13 and a half inches wide. And from the bottom of the kitchen towel to the top after it's folded and buttoned measures 16 inches long. So it's just a wonderful set. So let me tell you what you're going to need to make the projects and I'll tell you the supply list for each individual item and then for the complete set. So for the dishcloth, you're going to need about three-fourths of a skein of the Premier Home Cotton in this beautiful red, white, and blue multicolor. Now the Premier Home Cotton comes in a 96-yard skein, 88 meters, 1.94 ounces, and 55 grams. Now this is an 85% cotton, 15% polyester, and that extra polyester helps keep the colors brighter. This is classified as a number four medium weight yarn. This yarn is machine washable, tumble dry low. So it's wonderful that you can wash and dry your projects. This is color America, color 44-04. So for the dishcloth, you're going to need three-fourths of a skein or one skein, and then you're going to need about a half an ounce of white. This is color 38-01 or whatever color you want to use for your border. I just use white because I really thought it helped make the multicolor pop. So again, for the dishcloth, you're going to need about 3 4 skein of the Americana multicolor and about a half an ounce of white for your border. Now for the kitchen towel, you're going to need two balls of the multicolor in the America, and you're going to need about one ounce of the white for the handle, a little less. That is what you need if you want to just make one or the other. If you want to make both as a set, then you're going to need three balls of the multicolor in the America, and you're going to need one skein of white for your border and the top of the strap. You're also going to need a button if you want to make the kitchen towel, and this is about one and a half inches across. So you can choose whether you want a star, if you want a circle button, or you can get maybe a flag button if you can find a little miniature flag. And I got my buttons at Joanne Fabrics. They have a large assortment of wonderful specialty buttons. You're also going to need a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. So again, today's crochet tutorial is going to be for the dishcloth. So let's go ahead and get our project started. To begin our project, I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. We're going to begin and we're going to chain 24. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook, and this creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five. 
continue until you have 24 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my 24 chains made and now we're ready to begin row one. Row one is a simple single crochet row. You're going to skip the first chain and you're going into the second chain from hook. Insert into the second chain, work a single crochet. Yarn over the hook, pull it through that chain. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how you make a single crochet. Single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into the next chain. Continue and work one single crochet in each chain across to the end of your chain and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. You worked one single crochet in each chain across and you should have a total of 23 single crochet. Now if you're new to crocheting, go ahead and put a stitch marker in that very first stitch and then put a stitch marker into your last stitch made and that way when you turn your work you're going to know this is your first stitch and this will be the last stitch of the next row. Now with this pattern, row one will be the base row, row two and row three will be your repeat rows. So let's go ahead and begin row two. Row two, you're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. Now this beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet into this very first stitch. You're going to yarn over, skip that beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch and go under the top two loops, yarn over and pull back through that stitch. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you make a half double crochet. Now we're ready to begin our repeat. You're going to skip this next stitch. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch going under the top two loops, yarn over, pull back through that stitch, you have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just made a half double crochet. Half double crochet back into that same stitch. And that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Skip the next stitch, into the next stitch, work two half double crochets. One, and two. And that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. You're going to skip that next stitch, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work two half double crochet. One, and two. And again, that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue the repeat across to the very end of the row. You're going to skip the next stitch, work two half double crochet into the next stitch. Skip the next stitch and work two half double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that across to the end of the row. I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two. If you're new to crocheting, move your stitch marker up to that very first half double crochet stitch and then move your stitch marker up to the very last half double crochet stitch. Now with this pattern, you're starting with one half double crochet into that very first stitch, but you're ending with two half double crochet into the last stitch. And that's because we want to keep the same stitch count of 23 stitches. So at the end of row two, you're going to have a total of 23 stitches. So now we're ready to begin row three. To begin row three, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. The beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. Now for row three, we're going to work a simple single crochet row. Again, you're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first stitch, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch. 
single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row three I'm over at the end of row three we worked one single crochet in each stitch across and you're going to have a total of 23 single crochet stitches. So again, if you're new to crocheting, move your stitch markers up to the first stitch and the last stitch of the row. So now to continue working on your dishcloth, you're going to repeat row two and row three nine more times. So again, to continue working on your dishcloth, you're going to repeat rows two and three nine more times, and you'll be at the end of row 21. So go ahead and continue working on your dishcloth, and I'll meet you at the end of row 21. I'm over at the end of row 21. This is what your dishcloth should look like. Now you may have a slightly different stitch pattern depending on where you started at the skein. Now when you're trying to make a square, what I like to do is I like to take this corner and just bend it down to the other corner. And then that way I know my dishcloth is square. So now since we're at the end of row 21, I'm done with the multicolor. Now it's up to you if you want to use the same color for the border, but I decided to use white because I really wanted to brighten it up and have the focal point in the center with the multicolor. So I'm just going to fasten off my work and I like to leave a longer length, especially with a dishcloth when you're scrubbing those dishes. You want to make sure this end is nice and secure. So when you have it a little bit longer, you can really weave it in nice and secure by going back in and out through those stitches, back through a second time, and maybe even a third time. And if you split the stitch and bring your yarn out, it holds it even more secure. So when I fasten off, I just chain two. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, pull my hook up and out, grab that yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So that is how I fasten off. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my white. Now we're going to keep our dishcloth on the right side. We finished on the right side and we're going to stay on the right side. And we're just going to get our white and come back over to the first stitch of the last row worked. So I have my white and I'm going to leave about a six to eight inch length because I really do like having that extra length to work with to really secure my yarn. Again, this is where we fastened off. We're going to stay on the right side and you're just going to go back to the very first stitch of row 21. You're going to insert your hook right under the top two loops of that very first stitch in the top right hand corner and you're just going to pull your new color through. Now this would look pretty with blue, with red, or with white as the trim. Or again, you can use that multicolor. I believe the white is really going to brighten it up and really make that center pop. We're going to begin and we're going to chain one. Now this beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. You're going to yarn over, insert back under the top two loops of that first stitch, work a half double crochet. Now I'm going to just let my end hang down in the back and I'll secure this with my yarn needle when I'm all done with my dishcloth. To work across the top of our dishcloth, we're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch across to the last stitch. In the last stitch, we're going to work three half double crochet. So let's go ahead and begin. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Half double crochet into the next stitch. half double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue and work one half double crochet in each stitch across to within the last stitch. 
the last stitch we're going to work three half double crochet. I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at the last stitch at the top of our dishcloth. We worked one half double crochet in each stitch across and now we have one stitch remaining. We're going to work three half double crochet into this last stitch. Yarn over, insert under the top two loops of that last stitch, work three half double crochet. One, two, and three. So now we're ready to work down the side of our dishcloth and we're going to repeat the same method around all three sides. We're going to be working one half double crochet in each stitch or each row and stitch or each chain at the bottom of the foundation chain and then when you get to the last stitch on that side you're going to work three half double crochet. So let's go ahead and start working down the side of our dishcloth. So you just want to spin your work around so the side is now facing top so you can work across. We're going to go right into this same first row end stitch. We worked in the top and it brought our stitches around but we're going right back into that first row end stitch. Yarn over, insert into that row end stitch and when it's a single crochet row I split it right in the center of that stitch. Work my half double crochet. Then you're going to have your half double crochet row. So you're going to half double crochet into that half double crochet row end stitch. Half double crochet into the single crochet row end stitch. And if you're not sure where your row end stitches are, just follow those stitches down. Here's my half double crochet because there's two stitches together. Just follow that right down to the edge of your work and that's where your row end stitch is. Half double crochet into that next row end stitch. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. and continue and work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down to the very last stitch and then you're going to work three half double crochet into that last row and stitch and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner. We just worked down the side of our dishcloth in each row and stitch we worked one half double crochet. We have one row end stitch remaining, so we're going to work three half double crochet into this last single crochet row end stitch. Yarn over, insert into that row end stitch, work three half double crochet. One, two, and three. Now I weaved in my end and when I weaved in my end it really drew this first chain stitch too tight. So my first stitch is actually right here and it's going to be really tight so I'm just going to go in the same spot that I worked these three half double crochet stitches in. So I'm going to spin my work around. So again you're going to half double crochet into this first chain space unless it's tight if you weaved in your ends. I'm just going to half double crochet right in the same space as I did my three half double crochet. And that will count as the first half double crochet across the bottom foundation chain. Now you're going to work one half double crochet in each chain of the foundation chain. And when you look at your foundation chain, you can see here's a chain, here's a chain, here's a chain, and you can see those loops as you go across. Half double crochet into the next chain. Half double crochet into the next chain. half double crochet into the next chain, half double crochet into the next chain, continue and work one half double crochet in each chain across to the very last chain and we'll work three half double crochet into that last chain. So I'll meet you at the next corner. 
I'm over at my next corner. I have one chain to go on the foundation row and we worked one half double crochet in each chain across. So when you get to the very last chain, we're going to work three half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the last chain across, work three half double crochet. One, two, and three. So now we're just going to spin our work around. So now we're going to work down our length and we're just going to repeat what we've done on the other side. We're going to work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down the length to the last row and stitch and then we're going to work three half double crochet into that very last row and stitch. So let's begin. When you look at your work, you're going to find your first single crochet row. Just follow it down and that will show you where your first row end stitch is. Yarn over, insert into the first row end stitch, work a half double crochet. Half double crochet into the next row end stitch. And again, if you're not sure, follow your stitches down to the edge of the row half double crochet into the next row and stitch, half double crochet into the next row and stitch. Continue down the side of your dishcloth and work one half double crochet in each row and stitch down to the last row and stitch and we're going to work three half double crochet into the last row and stitch and I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at the last row and stitch, our single crochet row and stitch, and now we're going to work three half double crochet into that very last row and stitch. One, two, and three. To join our round, we're going to come up to the top of that beginning half double crochet stitch. Insert under the top two loops of the beginning half double crochet stitch, and then slip stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Round one of our dishcloth is finished. So now it's time to do round two of our dishcloth border and this is just going to be a simple single crochet round just to add just that little touch extra around the border. So let's go ahead and begin round two. You're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet right back into that joining stitch. Insert under the top two loops yarn over, pull back through, you have two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a single crochet. So what we're going to do for this round is we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the three half double crochet of the corner. So let's go ahead and get started. Single crochet into the next stitch and again remember to go under the top two loops single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across until you reach the corner. I'll meet you at the corner. I'm over at my corner three half double crochet. So when you look at your work, make sure you're looking at that corner where you're seeing all three of those stitches. So to find your first half double crochet of the corner three half double crochet, look and see where that first stitch goes into that corner with the other stitches. So here's the first stitch, follow it up. Here's the second stitch and here's the third stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to work a single crochet into the first half double crochet of the corner three, a single crochet into the second half double crochet of the corner three, and in the third half double crochet of the corner, we're going to work three single crochet. And when you look at a pattern, sometimes you go in the center stitch, but for this one we're going into the third stitch because of where it lays on the corner. It's exactly right into the corner. So into that third half double crochet stitch, work three single crochet. One, two, and three. 
and we're just going to repeat this process around the remaining three sides. So let me get you started again. So again, we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across until we get to the three half double crochet stitches of the corner. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across until you get to your corner three half double crochet and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner. I worked one single crochet in each stitch across until I got to my corner where you're going to see three half double crochet all into that same stitch. So just look for the first stitch, follow it up, and we're going to work a single crochet into the first stitch of the corner, a single crochet into the second stitch of the corner, and into that third stitch of the corner, we're going to work three single crochet. One, two, and three. And that is how you're going to do your remaining two sides. So again, if you need help, just click back on the video. You're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across until you get to your three half double crochet of the corner. You're going to work one single crochet into the first corner stitch, one single crochet into the second corner stitch, and three single crochet into the third corner stitch. And then you're just going to do it again around the last remaining side. So if you need additional help, just click back on the video. I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two. I just work three single crochet into the very last stitch of that corner. And now we're going to join with a slip stitch under the top two loops of that first single crochet. Insert under the top two loops, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Now I'm just going to fasten off, and again I like to leave a little bit longer length because I use my yarn needle to secure and weave in on the back. When I fasten off, I chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now I know the knot sticks up a little bit, so what you do is you just make sure you pull that down under and attach it on the back and secure it with your yarn needle. You can just pull it right down through some of these stitches back and forth, and I like to go at least three times. I go in and out underneath the back of the stitches. I come back a second time. I go back a third time, and then I split it right through the stitch to help secure that yarn. So our dishcloth is finished, and what's so nice is you can make this for the 4th of July with this America Multi. You can get the Christmas Multi and make these suitable for Christmas. You can make this in a solid color and pastels, brights, earth tone colors, any color you wish, and customize it to suit your own home decor. So thank you everybody for stopping by and making this dishcloth with me. I'll be back with part two, and we're going to use the same pattern stitch, and we're going to make a matching hanging kitchen towel. So hope to see you in the next video where we make our kitchen towel. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.